Hello everyone, this is Mr. Van der Veer again. Um, today I'll be... let's see, where was it? I'll be showing you um, the different settings that um, the NVIDIA control panel has, uh, specifically the 3D settings. Um, obviously this is only of use if you have an NVIDIA based graphics card. Um, it speaks for itself, but some of these um, uh, some of these things are uh, universal, for example, and stuff. Anisotropic filtering and anti-aliasing, for example, those two things are universal. Every card uh, supports those, um, at least the newer ones do. Um, and I'm going to go through them, them one by one, and basically explain um, what they do and what the impact is for your performance. So. Basically, it will tell you whether something's necessary or not. Let's see, I'll just start with the Battlefield tree. Yeah. First off, we have ambient occlusion. Um, this is a fairly... Um, uh, how do you say it? It's a fairly heavy um, technology. It requires a lot of uh, processing power. Um, most games do not support a uh, uh, manual setting of the ambient occlusion. Usually you'll have to um, uh, edit those settings within the game itself. Almost every game um, has this problem. Uh, let's see, Call of Duty, not supported, not supported. Batman, Batman Arkham City, not supported. See, I mean, Batman Arkham City is a very new, uh, very recent release and obviously it supports ambient uh, occlusion, but uh, you can't set uh, or change the setting in any game, apparently. Well, let's just keep it on Batman. Secondly, anisotropic filtering. <coughs> Man, who comes up with all these terms, really? Um, this is very important to me uh, because I really like texture, uh, texture crispness. Um, basically, this technology filters the textures that are uh, far away and the higher the setting, the further away the textures will be filtered. Um, basically, you'll see a huge, huge difference. If you set this from off to 16, you will see a gigantic difference. Um, and especially in shooters, it's very, very useful because you can basically um, see further ahead uh, because you know the textures are filtered they're uh, they're sharper so you can r recognize different objects uh, on, on long distances more easily plus it's just you know uh, um, um, the aesthetic effect of it is very pleasing too so I usually set this to the max because aniso anisotropic filtering is not really that uh, GPU in, uh, intense. It doesn't require that much uh, processing power compared to its brother, anti-aliasing. <coughs> um, anti-aliasing uh, really is something that is preference-based, uh, meaning if you don't mind the jagged edges, um, which you see in, in games without anti-aliasing, um, if you don't mind those jagged uh, artifacts, if you will, if you will, um, then you should just leave this off because anti-aliasing is very, very uh, uh, GPU intense. Uh, so it will uh, require a lot of uh, your video card to filter the entire scene. Um, there are different uh, uh, techniques for anti-aliasing. Um, the best technique, and it, it's only supported by NVIDIA cards, I think, uh, is FXAA. You should Google it, you should uh, go to YouTube and uh, find a video that, uh, you know, visually translates the differences between FXAA and the normal anti-aliasing, FSAA or MSAA. Um, those two are fairly outdated, outdated uh, technologies and FXAA is the newest uh, technology and it, it is extremely efficient. It really is bizarre um, how this wasn't invented 
before because um, what FXAA does, it basically has the same effect as normal uh, anti-aliasing. For example, uh, this, the uh, 8x, that means uh, the, the, the number stands for the times uh, the textures are filtered. So if you do 2x two times, uh, the textures will be filtered twice and you know the 32 times obviously uh, your textures will be fil uh, filtered 32 times each and every texture so that is insanely uh, uh, processing intensive um, so I would really not recommend going anywhere uh, above 8 8 really is uh, the max as far as I'm concerned and once again you know it's it's a matter of taste it's a matter of preference I usually set the anti-aliasing very low, at like two times. Unless the game supports the newer FXAA technology, then I set it you know, to the max. Uh, because FXAA um, filters the same way uh, the, the normal heavy weight filtering uh, technology does, but uh, it does it more efficiently. And that's the whole point. It filters the textures in a very efficient manner. Uh, so you basically get uh, two for the price of one, or better yet, five for the price of one. It, it really is that big of a difference when it comes to efficiency and result. So if the game, for example, uh, Batman Arkham City, supports FXAA, you should definitely, definitely use FXAA above anything else, uh, because it's very lightweight and it, 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 it smooths the picture out very, very um, efficiently um, and clearly. So I would recommend uh, either using the normal anti-aliasing setting very low um, and if the game supports FXAA you set it very high. Uh, but once again you should do that in the individual program because NVIDIA does not support uh, enabling individual FXAA options, not yet at least. Um, then we uh, go to the anti-aliasing transparency. Um, you can further increase uh, increase the crispness and clarity of the filtering done by the anti-aliasing. So these two things are not, not separate, they are in fact the same almost. Um, I, sh I should really recommend putting this on off. Um, it's really minimal, the, the, you know, the gain is really minimal. And uh, once again, if you prefer uh, performance over um, quality, then you should definitely put, uh, put this on off and set this on either two times or use global settings. Um, so the transparency is just a way to further enhance the image um, at the cost of even more processing power. So I would suggest just leaving that off, unless you're you're playing a very old game or you have a sick, sick computer and you know you have like four uh, dedicated uh, video cards and obviously you can set everything to the max. Um, but you know this clip is mainly about instructing um, uh, uh, how to optimize the gaming experience and not necessarily how to make it look the best it can. <coughs> so the next point is the CUDA. Uh, you should always uh, have this enabled or set on on. Uh, CUDA basically helps decode uh, textures. Uh, CUDA also decodes high def video, um, certain uh, certain encoded formats only, of course, uh, not everything. Um, it's a fairly new technology. It's very very useful. It's ba it basically uh, offloads your CPU. Um, giving your CPU more time to worry about other things and making your video card actually work on the graphic ac graphical aspect of well Windows or any other um, or any other uh, program um, this is used mainly with uh, for decoding um, uh, f especially for HD decoding um, it's not very interesting for gaming yet uh, Rage, the game Rage um, actually uses the CUDA uh, transistors um, to help decode the textures um, for the game. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so Rage is one of the games that actually uses the CUDA. 
I believe Arkham City also uses it, but I'm not completely sure. Um, but